Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I know I've been making a lot of my Dress Up Darling content recently, but I, I don't know, I truly think this is the best, like, I know most people wouldn't consider it a romance, but I think that's stupid, because Kitagawa and Gojo are obviously going to end up together, and there's obviously, like, feelings and passion there. Like, how is this not a romance? It makes absolutely no sense to me when people say shit like that. This is the best romance series. I, I would say of the last, like, six years. I think the only one that come, that's as good as it is uh, Quintessential Quintuplets. But the story is just top tier, let's be honest. Like, their relationship grows more and evolves more than like most anime series most anime series nothing fucking happens for 30 goddamn episodes and then all of a sudden they're to get to, they're together and they're holding hands oh my which would probably make kitagawa freak out i do think that the girls that were added later i think that was kind of a cop out but it's i'm kind of glad that it's like there was it didn't really, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I do need to get volume 5 and read it. Because who doesn't love this show? The the cast is just ungodly good. I love how they made the like in most romance series they'll they'll tell you they'll be like, "Oh my god, the main character is just an otaku weirdo." Oh my. And then he's like the most normal dude of all time. And it really irks me it pisses me off when they do that shit because it makes no fucking sense you're gonna tell me this guy isn't a taco weeb but literally he's the most normal guy of all time <clears throat> like how do you not see the like cap right there like that does it's so ir it's so irritating it's but also all her cosplays look incredible I know that's, like, the whole point, but, like, she genuinely looks like a totally different person when she puts the cosplays on. And, like, the fact that she's, like, so, like, okay with everything Gojo is into, and then she's gonna, like, she wants to take him places and, like, experience stuff with him, and she's, like, genuinely a good person. Like, she, she'll see somebody with the outfit and, like, She'll go over and talk to him forever. But she's rejected every guy ever, so that makes Gojo special. But how, how is Gojo special, you might ask? And I will tell you. He's nice. Like, he's a nice guy. He is willing to do whatever she wants him to do. She, he's willing to put up with anything she wants him to put up with, which is... I don't think she could find very many men who would put up with the stuff. And she's he's non-judgmental. Like, he couldn't care. Like, he does care, and he's genuinely interested in getting to know her. It's crazy. Now, that's, like, bottom of the barrel, like, normal human thing is for that to be, like, the case. That he is okay with that. Which he, everyone should be. If you're trying to get in a relationship with somebody and you don't like what they are into, you're not interested in getting to know them, then how can you have a serious relationship with somebody? Like, that literally makes no sense. It's, it's an oxymoron. It isn't how it happens. Like, that's not how life happens. When you want to get to know somebody, you want to get to know them. And she's so interested in these anime and manga and games. Like, she's the perfect woman for most weebs. She'd be the perfect woman for me. I fucking love that shit, dude. And, like, she's got a bubbly personality. Most of the time, they're fucking assholes. Or, like, one of the characters is boring. I genuinely like both of the characters. In this show. 
And I think it's funny that like he gets put in his grandpa gets put in situations where he thinks his grandson's a weirdo. Like when he was watching the, uh, he was playing that game, that the like sexual game, I forgot what it was called. And he walks in and sees that, like, just imagine walking in on your kid doing that. Like this, it's crazy. It's crazy. I went from reading Berserk, well, the first volume of Berserk, to this. Which I will get more volumes of Berserk, don't you worry. Berserk, God tier. But I honestly think for, like, a slice of life, like, romance series like this, and I think it's a comedy as well, it is amazing. Gojo has no faith in himself. And Kitagawa makes him have faith in himself because she drags that out of him. Like, at the beginning of the show, he's talking about how oh, nobody likes me, nobody's going to want to talk to me. And he's like, it's him fighting his inner demons. And then when he finally realizes she likes him, which I don't know when that's going to happen, I think it's going to make him a better person. Yes, yes, I do, yes, I do. You can't say that there's another anime like this. Like, I have never watched another, like... Ro- I've watched a lot of romance. Shitty romance series. I've watched a lot of good romance series. And none of them play this at this angle. They all say this person's an o- a otaku and weirdo and blah. And then, then they have, like... Then they're the most normal person ever. And, like, they'll have normal conversations with people. They'll have this, that, and the other. But, like, Gojo is actually awkward. Kitagawa is actually awkward, but she's she she embraces her awkwardness. She that's what helps sell her as a character, and it helps sell the show. I do. Th- act, I honestly think both characters shine really well in the show. Now it's anime, so there's some weird like scene shots, but like. Gojo is trying to be like a gentleman and stuff and he's not trying to like sneak a peek of her when she's like changing in front of him he's not he's trying to be as like genuinely good as he possibly can because he's a good guy and she knows that so she fucks with him she likes to mess with him and it, I, I find that shit funny because that's relationships for you that's her, their relationship is that Now, you're going to ask me, would I recommend the manga to people? I would say no. I don't think they change enough to, like, recommend reading the manga. But, like, I love this series so much, I'm going to continue to read it. And I'm going to continue to buy this series. Just like I buy all my other series. It's just... I would say... Out of her cosplays, the first one's my favorite. But it's also the one they spend the most time on. The one they hype up the most. And it's his first cosplay. Like, imagine that being your first cosplay. Like, that thing's beautiful. That's gorgeous. And, like, I don't think he makes a flaw. I don't think he messes up at all. But I know, in his mind, it's not good enough. And... and the fact that he had like a test like he had, he had finals that week and he still finished it because he was such a nice guy and she was like oh no i was i was going to wait it was going to be whatever but he finished and then instead of being mad that she, like the situation turned out the way it was because he had whatever time he wanted he was just happy to know that he could fix a few things and they still had some time like, he was more relieved than anything. And it's like, that's just, that's, he's such a good, he's a good dude. Now, the weird anime trope where they make the older sister uh tiny, petite little chick. And then they make the younger sister a giant, like, looks like a milk version of the other one. Like, man, I didn't like that. That made me so uncomfortable. That's like the only part of the show where I'm like, no. But then they dress her up as a guy, which is fine, you know. 
co girls cosplay guys all the time because all the cool anime characters are dudes. <laughs> that might be the most controversial statement I've said in this entire video, but it's fucking true. There's very few badass females in anime. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. A peace.